Hello, Naomi. Hello, Nina. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am good. Um, except that I found something out that literally I think I've been in a funk for the last few days since I found out about this thing that I wanted to tell you about. In the meantime, I don't care if you think I'm crazy. Naomi doesn't think I'm crazy. Um, but I don't care if you think I'm crazy. But the horse that this is about doesn't want me to, t to say who it is. And I thought that that was actually a good idea. Because it doesn't matter who he is. He's over it. He, that's why he doesn't want me to talk about it. He uh, doesn't mind if I talk about it without his name. Because the reason why it's important is um, because of the issue that's going to lead us into. So one of the racehorses that we have has a scar on his face. Don't say. If you know who it is already, don't say. And when he first came in, I really wanted to know what that scar was because I wanted to make sure that he didn't have some kind of an injury to his neck or to his pole or anything that would hurt him as a riding horse because with such a bad scar on his face, you'd think that it was maybe from being tied to something and pulling back or something like that. Um, we asked the animal communicator about it and she said something really bizarre actually when you think about it. She said, no, it was nothing like being tied. Um, it was nothing that scared him. I'm thinking, how could that not scare him? Well, do you have any idea what it could have been? I have no idea. The place, I guess it was his breeding facility, left his halter on him when he was a foal, and his head grew, and they never changed the halter. And when he went to be brought to auction, they realized that his, the halter was growing into his face and it had to be cut off of him. Oh my God. Oh. That's so horrific. Have you ever heard of that happening with a dog collar? Yes. I, I, with anything that's like too tight around their neck for too long, yes. it can like cut into the skin and then if it's not taken care of, the skin will grow over it. That's exactly what happened to him with the halter. Oh my goodness. Is that repulsive, yes. horrifying, and heartbreaking? It, it really, I, I still feel like I want to cry when I, when I talk about it. Um, that's why he told the animal communicator, no, it was nothing traumatic, because it wasn't like he banged it or was it an accident. It happened so slowly to him that he knew, of course, when it got cut off of him, that was awful. But um, when it was happening, it wasn't like it was a traumatic thing. It was just a little bit day by day by day, right? Yeah. That's insane. I wonder what breeding facility that was. Well, that is what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about breeding. And I want to talk about how bad the whole idea of it is. And first of all, what do you know about the horses that go to auction? I know they come from a lot of different types of places. I know there's people that go to the auctions to purchase them for sometimes animal meat, sometimes it's people that genuinely are looking for like a lifelong horse, and then some people that are just trying to turn a profit. Yes, 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 and yes. I read that in the year 2018, over 80,000 horses went to slaughter. Most of them, they didn't give a number or a percentage, they just said most of them originating from being at auction. Okay, so what happens, okay, now say you were a breeder and you are breeding like racehorses. So it's not like a sport horse breeder where someone calls you up and says, can you ship me some semen? I have this great mare and I want to breed it to that stallion. And you know that person's probably going to give that horse a home and do something with it or something. It has a little bit better chance. But say you're like a, maybe a second tier uh, racehorse breeder, whether it's a thoroughbred or Arabian or quarter horse. Well, what, ha what happens to your horses that don't sell? I don't know if I want to know. Yeah, yeah they probably don't. They probably yeah. don't want to know. I would imagine they're going to auction. That's what I would imagine. And they're hoping that someone's going to pick them up, you know, for, a, for a, a, an easy price and do something with them. But if not, we know who buys them at the end of the day when well, no, those horses don't get sold, the killer buys them. Yeah. So basically these breeders are sort of breeding for the, for the slaughterhouse. Yeah, and I mean, 
that's a kind of a high percentage too. It reminds me a lot of the puppy mills. And this is why I kind of, I don't support breeding as an industry at all, because in my perspective, I don't think it's ethical. I'm just gonna say dogs for a second, because yes. that's what I yes. know best. But um, I you know, grew up with parents that went to dog breeders. As an adult, I would never go to a dog breeder. But I don't really support it ethically, because as long as there's dogs on the street, you know, a problem that, by the way, we created by domesticating them to begin with, and all of these dogs without homes and in abusive situations and neglectful situations and like the shelters are overflowing and euthanizing dogs every day, how is it ethical to be like intentionally making more? That is my question with horses. When I see these ads online for horses for sale, and you can just see like, hmm, who's gonna buy that horse? Who's gonna do what with that horse? That horse is gonna end up going to auction and that horse is like just three stages away from being on somebody's dinner plate. There's too much of that. It's the same thing like the puppy mill thing. It's the same thing with horses. When there are so many horse rescues that are overtaxed and overburdened with not just people's old horses, who they refuse to give a forever home to, but with young horses and young healthy horses, when they're overburdened with those horses, how dare we breed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that we have to pick up the slack for the racing industry, but it is a multi, I think billion dollar industry and they're gonna keep breeding. So if you're a concerned equestrian, why wouldn't you then make sure that you recycled horses off the track? Because you know that that's a wheel that's gonna be very hard to stop turning, but at least you can make some inroads with people at the track and get those poor horses before. Yeah. I go to auction. I just, I really despise and like the whole industry and just the commodification of animals as if they're, you know, items. If our horse that had the un very unfortunate halter situation had been like a sport horse that someone had paid for the stallion semen and it was in their beloved mare, that would have never happened. That only happened because he was a number. He wasn't a, he wasn't his name. He was that horse that was born on that day that we'll probably hold on to for another, for a year and a half and then it's gonna go to the race training. Yeah, and as long as profit is the priority, there is, the animal will always be mistreated because they will always care about the profit more than the care of the animal. And I think with any, with most large-scale businesses based around uh, animals, horses, they're always going to have profit as the top priority. And, and because of that, the horses aren't going to get the care they need and they will end up in those kind of situations. You know, even some of the, I'm thinking of like some of the ranch, the, like the ranch breeders, they're, they're not so much like, oh, you know, they're going to ship the semen. They have like a nice stallion and they, you know, do tend to do a certain amount of breeding to get that horse. I feel like there needs to be some sort of legislation. <laughs> I feel like there needs to be like, you know, uh, if you're going to breed, you have to breed responsibly and we would have to outline what that responsible breeding is, but not so that you are literally just breeding this beautiful sentient being that has a personality and is filled with love and has t a complete potential to have an amazing life is literally going to go from the breeding farm to the auction to the slaughterhouse. That almost sounds like we're raising horses for food. Yeah, and I mean, which essentially we are, then I don't think anybody, but we're so used to living in this society where we're very used to the idea of exploiting animals and it not being any kind of problem, just like our slaughterhouse industry. People are very programmed to not see that as a problem. So when they're confronted with that, most of the people are gonna be like, yeah, that's the job. They there's don't a, see it for what it is. There's another thing at breeding farms that I have come to see that I believe is very inhumane. And that is taking the foals away from their mothers. What do, you, what do you think about that? What do you know about that? I, I know how it works with cows. I don't know how it works with horses, but with cows, I know it's super, super traumatic for the mother cow and the baby cow, and it happens 
you know, that's why people think it's so cute when the little baby cows will suck on their fingers, which sometimes if they're giving someone a tour of a dairy farm, they'll let the cows suck on your fingers. I knew people with a dairy farm and I experienced that. And at first you're like, oh, that's so cute. The reason they're doing that is because they, what they want is to be doing that with their mother. Right. Which they no longer have access to. And it's, be, it's their instinct that they don't know what to do with. Horses at a breeding farm, uh, it's not unusual for them to get taken away from their mothers. It's, it's funny because we make it acceptable. It's like, oh, that's accepted. Oh, all, all breeding farms do that. I'm like, but does that make it right? We're yeah. back to just because everybody does it, does it make it right? So most breeding farms take the foals away from their mothers way too young. They make all kinds of excuses like, oh, well, the mother's exhausted. She doesn't want to have the baby you know, with her anymore. Really? The mother's exhausted because you took that baby away and then re-impregnated her just to have another one and then another one and then another one. Yes, I'd be exhausted too. If you let nature take its course in the herd, that foal would still be in very close proximity to its mother until it's like two years old. It would still be hanging around. Even when the mother has another foal at its side, it would still be hanging around. And yeah, and that just sounds, that whole thing sounds so barbaric to me. I feel like people should be asking when they hear about those practices or if they participate in those practices or are comfortable because that is normalized, they should be asking themselves, if you just replace the horse with a human, uh, would that disgust you? Would that appall you? Would you find that morally reprehensible? And if you would, why is it different? That is the, the gauge I have been stating lately in anything that I've been writing or what have you, the do unto others. I'm, you know, I'm not a religious person, I'm a spiritual person, but I'm not a religious person, but we've all heard that phrase, do unto others. I think it's gotta go across the board for, from species to species, you know, to help people understand what it means to actually be compassionate. I don't know if people have a real good understanding of what it actually means to be compassionate and to have compassion. Not when it comes to animals. Because I feel like if it's anything that's normalized, people are willing to rationalize. And it's sort of like we look at things throughout history and we're like, oh my God, that was so horrible. How could they do that? Uh, we also do things that are really horrible and we're just not seeing it because we have the goggles on of it being normalized in society and we're desensitized to it because we grew up with it. I coined a term for that, not very creative. But I call that the accepted abuses. Mm -hmm. Those are the accepted abuses. I think that we could all, in just you know, a rational moment, say, I, I, yeah, I guess that's abusive. But everybody does it. The accepted abuses. It, should any abuse be accepted? No. And if they have the ability to suffer, then why is it different if it's an animal rather than a human? That's the they, best point. They can live. They experience emotions. They have the ability to suffer. So why do we hold them to such different standards than human beings and how they're treated? I would like to know the answer to that. So if you're watching this, first of all, we would love for you to subscribe to the YouTube channel, um, but we'd love to have some comments. And if you, especially if you have a different opinion, because that's what I think we need to understand. Where does this disconnect? Where is the disconnect coming from? Why isn't it that we all feel that maybe horses shouldn't go to auction because they have an uncertain path once they're there. You know, why don't we all agree on that? I want to understand why we don't all agree on that. And why we think that they owe us their lives. We take them, we do absolutely whatever we want with them. They end up in so many abusive situations. We're taking their lives. Like, what is it about us that makes us feel so entitled to their lives, to the life of someone else? I'll tell you, I'll tell you the answer. People will say, because I pay for him. I, I pay for the vet, I pay for the food, I pay for the board, it's very expensive, and so when I come out of work, I wanna have a, a fun ride, and I want him to do what I wanna do, and I wanna jump that course, and so if he doesn't wanna do it, I'm gonna use a whip and spurs and whatever else I have to make him do it, because I need to have a nice day after work, and I'm paying for everything. Yeah, and you're paying someone, but you're not paying the horse. You might have paid someone for the horse, but that's very different than Oh, but what horse. if they say, no, no, what would that horse do if I wasn't paying for him? 
probably, I mean, be with somebody else. But at the end of the day, the reason that the industry exists is because keep, people keep participating in it. And as long as people keep participating in the industry, it's going to exist. That is the best point. Perpetuation. Mm -hmm. As long as we perpetuate these things, they will stay acceptable and we will not have any changes. And that's why we're having these discussions because we want to normalize the act of talking about it and not having it be some taboo thing that you're some feather ruffler, you know, if you start talking about it. Yeah, some hippie. Yes. Like, that's the stereotype, but I'm like, I think it's really funny that the people who get ridiculed are the people who are like, wait, but maybe we should question why we like ruthlessly abuse other creatures for our entertainment. And then we get written off as the crazy people and the hippies. Yes, of course. And that is how it's always been throughout history. Mm -hmm. But we will stay the course. And we hope that you will comment. And we thank you for listening. And Naomi, thank you so much for another very interesting conversation. Absolutely. Yes, thank you for having me. Thank you.